Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel titled 3D Caleb. Last week, I showed you the, the progress on the, the rasterizer that I'm building and um, where I can show that I can draw lines and triangles. And this is Pete getting in the way. Uh, like this stuff, I don't know if see. It's able to do stuff like that. Look at my watch here, yeah, see. Build triangles. And I've been making some additional progress through the book. So this is gonna be just a little update because I've been working through the, the clipping, the depth sorting, and the uh, back face culling, and I'm about to get to the, the shading which uh, really gives a lot of extra pop to the objects because you can it gives it that that real true 3D appearance when you can see more of just all the faces and they kind of have a distinction like the shadow just gives it the depth of like say a sphere if you didn't have any of the shadowing you if you were looking at that sphere you know it would just be a circle so that's where I am in the book and I have a a demo scene here set up ready to show and um, it's, it goes over some really important concepts when you're doing real-time 3d rendering because you always want to draw things as fast as you can not waste any computational time you know doing too many arithmetic operations filling too many things on the screen that are just gonna get overwritten and therefore you know you want what you want it to do as little as it can per cycle so the concepts that I'm about to show are all related to like hidden surface, you know, removal and you know drawing things in the right order. You'll see frustrum calling, back face calling, and depth sorting via a Z buffer. And those are wonderful algorithms that can reduce your the drawing time immensely with, without any you know visual visual disturbances so i have a demo ready and we'll go through these and i'll talk about them more okay so let's go ahead and get this program compiled as you can see right here i'm in the watcom integrated development environment and i'm going to go back to the the main screen of the tool and i'm going to hit f4 okay so we got it ex uh built and boom there it is there's our wonderful looking cubes it's actually three cubes and they you know they look okay they, but you know something looks a little a little bit wrong with them and i'll discuss why so up here it's saying back face calling is off and they kind of look like cubes but it's they're not just really easy to distinguish as a solid cube they just kind of look strange it's because what's happening is there's faces of the triangle that we're not even seeing like the actual, you know, the back sides of the triangles here, like you would say behind this triangle, I mean, sorry, cube behind this cube and behind this cube, there's faces being drawn. Like we can see here that are kind of fighting which face you're going to see they're being drawn, but it's kind of a waste because, well, we're not even going to see that. So there's a really elegant way to determine if the camera, which were the camera can see that face and it uses something called the normal of the face which you can calculate based off the cross product which the cross products are really powerful function from linear algebra that allows you to take a few points of a surface and then compute the normal which is perpendicular to the face and then you use something called the dot product which we can use with information from our viewing direction to then determine if we can see the face and if we don't, then don't render it. So when we turn that on, it suddenly looks a little bit different. See now they look more like cubes because the faces that was drawing over this front face right here, the blue behind it was drawing over this, which is kind of weird. And now they look more like cubes because we're not drawing the faces behind them. And then also the faces we're drawing over them because we don't have that's another problem you have to figure out is how do you draw things in the right order so you don't have faces overlapping and then just making the scene look like nonsense, which actually we, we need to go in another step further. Now you can see Z buffer is off and this cube right here is actually supposed to be behind the other two cubes, but it makes you think it's actually in front, but it's wrong. Since we have to implement something called a Z buffer, which a Z buffer stores a Z value for every pixel on your screen. And it's more of a general purpose 
algorithm because it's kind of costly. It takes a bit of memory and it's not the fastest tool in the toolkit to figure out how to draw things in the right order. There's things called the painter's algorithm or binary space partition trees that can assist with the depth sorting, but they have their own trade-offs. We're just gonna use a general purpose one. We don't really care that much about speed, but it visually makes it look correct. So Z buffer, there's, for every pixel, as it's drawing, it stores the Z value, which is the depth into the screen of where that pixel is. So every time we're drawing, it's like, okay, I'm about to draw a green pixel. Is there anything in front of me or am I the, or am I the fir closest to the camera? Because it's checking, so they're all, after it checks that and it finds out, oh, I'm actually the closest to the camera. Okay, draw me. But when, we're, when we get down here, you're gonna, it's gonna eventually think, okay, red, 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 okay, red. Uh, am, I, am I the closest? So far, if you're like, oh yeah, you are the closest. Okay, draw red. But then when it gets to the green pixel, it's when it draws that, it's gonna be, wait a minute, actually no, green is actually closer to the screen, so draw green on top of where the red pixel used to be. And then when we enable that Z buffering, it all of a sudden looks like this. There we go. Now the cube is in the, looks like it's in the correct location as I've defined in, in the software to be behind the other two cubes. And the Z buffer is determined that actually these pixels are closest to the camera. And the Z buffer is as wide as the display buffer, but instead of storing colors, it stores depth values, for example, floating point values of all the pixels that are being drawn on screen. And so you have to provide the projected Z values as you're, go, as you're uh, going through your, you know, say your drawing function, you're drawing your pixels, and the, those uh, projected Z values are what are put into the Z buffer then there's a simple comparison as you're going through, eventually drawing the pixel. It's like, okay, I'm about to draw green. Is this actually the closest pixel in this location in the display buffer? If it is the closest, draw it. So hopefully that makes sense. The book covers um, all this you know, information really nicely. Computer graphics from scratch. And you can see how visually much better it makes the image. There's also something else going on called frustrum culling. And that's really critical to remove objects so you can't even see. So imagine we have like a, like a, like a pyramid, like, well, like, a, like two planes right here, two planes right here, and then a plane in front and a plane behind us. So there's, usually there's like six planes. And what you do is, say if we were to be able to rotate this, as things move off screen and they go beyond that plane, we suddenly just discard it. Because if you don't discard things, the projection formulas can break down when you have objects behind you and cause all sorts of issues, unless your code specially handles objects behind you. But the best thing to do is just clip it. And so that can save a lot of processing power because as you're you know, going through the, um, the scene, if you, if you could you know, navigate through, through the scene, all the things behind you suddenly just disappear. So that's what's going on here. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to show frustrum calling, but it is in place. And there is a cube actually behind us, but it's, it's properly being culled, or I should say clipped from this, this scene. You know, and that's what I have so far. I thought it was a cool little scene. I had fun putting text in here to, to show the different stages of adding these ways to remove surfaces that you're not viewing and to make sure to draw things in the right order. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this demo, giving us a visual example of frustrum culling, back face culling, and Z buffering. And you can think of those three stages as going from coarse to medium to fine as it goes through the, the stages of removing pixels that should not be drawn. So that's all I have for this week. I don't have any licorice in here. Okay, well, 